to the African American, to the people who are this victim, and they will continue to be the victim. This is not the end of it. As long as the system refuses to change, there is going to be another one. Exactly. Sorry to break the bad news. Yeah. What What is your message to these people, to these brothers and sisters who, for no reason, except for be from Africa, except for not being a European, what is your message to them? What do you think they should do? And this is why, uh, my brother, that I've been teaching African history is to have the identity with back home. You have to know what you come from. If you don't know where you come from, you're just roving about in someone else's land and don't know where you're going. You need to look backwards, have the Sankofa mentality, to understanding that when you build something, you have to find a way to protect it too. We have a lot of great entrepreneurs, black entrepreneurs in this country. But once you build that brand that you're building, now you have to find out how you're going to secure it. We have to start thinking on this level. When kingdoms, when Kush, when Kemet, Mali, Zululand, Carthage, Abensinia, Aksum, these places were built, the king ordered a military to protect it. So as you're trying to figure out who you are, you need to look back at your ancestors and what they did, how they built kingdoms, how they made successful families, brought wealth through the family, and then you have to learn how to protect it once you have it. But again, you got to look back. When you have no identity and have no purpose to what you're doing and don't know exactly what you come from, all you've been told in this country is that your people in Africa are colonized and that you're, that you're a slave in this country. That's all we've been told here, brother. So we have to think back, backwards. And knowing what's back there can help us go forward. So that's that's what I think we have to do. And I'm, I'm constantly on African history needs to be taught in schools worldwide. It should not be an option. It shouldn't be optional. It should be mandatory because Africa is the beginning of all humanity. And if white supremacists were able to un grow up understanding that Africa is mama Africa for every human being, they wouldn't be thinking the way they're thinking. Because, but they're taught this dogmatic Eurocentric view that Europe is responsible for everything great and that everyone else is an enemy. <laughs> and this is the mentality that gives birth to hate crimes. Probably because those people, they are not enlightened enough. Maybe that's why. Because if they are Latin enough, they will understand that the other day, the, the father of European civilization were going to study in Africa. Exactly. If they understand, that is why I was saying, if they understand enough, they even their own history. Because if you know, if you understand your history very well, then you will be more mature now that you need to deal with people, not by taking guns and start shooting them, you know, by iterating. Because human beings live by iteration. How yes. many people are you going to kill? Let's take let's take a, a step back really quickly in history. Yes, please. In history, let's look at the um, time in Europe. It is referred to as the Dark Ages. You had the bubonic plague, which killed millions of Europeans. You had crop failure that was happening in the 1400s, the 1300s, the 1200s, the, the 1100s of uh, A.D. You had the, the, the Hundred Years' War between French, British. You had these things that were depleting the population of Europeans. And then you go down a bit to 1884, 1885. These Europeans said to themselves, well, we've been warm with each other. We have crop failure. It's cold. It's the coldest time ever in Europe. But yet there are people south that are thriving in Africa. There's a man named Mansa Musa who's traveling to Mecca, giving away billions of dollars in gold, resources, massive architectural constructions down in Egypt, which we know about, Mali and Zimbabwe and all of these great nations that are happening at this time. They came together and they sent out mercenaries to these different parts of Africa, India, the United States, the, the Americas today, and they pillaged those lands 
for themselves and made it for themselves. This is the same thinking of white supremacy, though that they were dying on their own. They look to terrorize other places. And this is exactly what they did, terrorize and colonize. So this is a repeat history. See, some people think that historians are actually psychics. No, we're not psychics. We just know that history repeats itself. That's all we know. As long as in Africa, we do not have a solid background, they can do whatever they like. Exactly. And that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, Echo. So how do we, how do we reestablish ourselves so that we can have a solid base at home? Well, finance in our regions, we can financially influence things based off of putting wealth groups together financing each other, supporting one another, which is another thing. It's a whole other topic, something that we don't do um, as much as we should. Um, but these are the right now, those are the only ways. I mean, you're a foreigner in your in, in these lands that we're in, whether you're in the UK, uh, the US, Canada, you're a foreigner in these areas. And then you go back home and the are ruled by foreigners back home. Whether they say your state is free, your country is free, you're not free. Because you go to the Congo, you see 747 planes flying into the mines and flying right out with no passport. That's not free. No fair exchange. You have people who have never had chocolate in, 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 in Ghana, in the Ghana farm, in, in, in farms and got cocoa farms in Ghana, never tasted chocolate, never had a cup of coffee. That's not freedom. You don't even see the fruits of your labor. You can't mad, you can't produce. The, 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 the raw materials to, uh, to, to you have no way to, to truly process it, to turn it into chocolate back home. That's not by mistake, my brother. These things are on purpose. So when we talk about what happened to Africa, you have to understand that Africa was destabilized for, for the benefit of the rest of the world resource-wise.